we want to graph one cycle of y equals 2 cosecant of x and determine the period asymptotes in range. So often what students will do is they'll say, okay, I know that my base function is the cosecant of x, but I also recall that this is 1 over the sine of x. So how does that help you? Well, the kind of cool thing about that is, is most people remember how to graph sine of x. So we know it starts at the origin, and it basically looks like this. The point of intersection is pi, as well as 2 pi. So how does that help me? Well, I know if it's a cosecant, those values now are going to be where my vertical asymptotes are. So that's a dashed line. I'm going to have another one over here. It also tells me that since it's 1 over, where my vertices are, so either a minimum or a maximum, that's where it's going to cross for cosecant. So it's going to touch and go down. It's going to touch on this one and go up. So that's what y equals cosecant of x looks like. So how does that help me? Well, it's pretty easy because remember it's 1 here, and where it intersects down here is minus 1, but now it says that the amplitude is 2, so where's it actually going to have to cross? It's going to have to cross at 2. So it's going to have to come up to 2 and negative 2. So if I were to redraw it, and I don't know, I'm going to try to redraw it on this one just so you can see all of them together, it's going to come up here, and then down here the vertices at negative 2, and it comes down. So how is that helpful? Well, We've done the graph. That's exactly what it says. We need to graph one cycle of y equals 2 cosecant of x. But now I need to know what is the period. Oh look, I've already got the asymptotes because they're going to be in there with what I already have, and I need to find the range. So let's look at it in standard form. So that's going to be y equals a cosecant bracket b times x minus c plus d. So I need to put what they originally gave me into the formula that I just wrote down. So how am I going to do that? Well, we're going to take little baby steps to do that. So it's going to be y equals, I've already got the 2 and the cosecant. Now, what is the coefficient in front of it? Well, it happens to be 1 this time. So it's going to be 1 times x minus 0, because there's no c and there's no d. So now it looks just exactly like what I see up there. So that tells me that the amplitude is 2, which we've already used. It tells me that b is 1, so the period is 2 pi. Then c is 0, so we don't care about it. And d is also 0, so it has done nothing for us. What about those asymptotes? Well, we already know what they are, but we need to make sure that we include the formula that we've learned for them. So remember to find the asymptotes of cosecant it's actually going to be x equals k times pi, which makes sense, because if k is 1, it's going to be pi, which we've already got, and if it's 2, it's going to be 2 pi, which we've already got as well. So the only thing that we're actually missing is the range. And if you recall, what we know about the range is that it goes from negative infinity to a, which in our case is 2, or it goes from 2 to positive infinity.